let me say, let me speak briefly and maybe have time for a few questions. Um, and uh, I'll let you go out here in Philadelphia tonight. Um, Philadelphia actually is a nice town, so I won't make any jokes about, you know, I'd let, I'll let you go early so you could have, you know, two hours out, in, uh, two hours out on the Saturday night in Philadelphia, and that's the second prize after one hour or whatever, the, whatever version, whatever version, I know that's terrible, whatever version of that old W.C. Fields joke is. But it's unfair. I, I, I taught here and I we visit here a lot, and I, I actually like Philly a lot. Um, but let me give you a sense of where I think we are politically, in, in a broad sense, not in a particularly you know, partisan or, or polemical sense, and tie in a little bit the legal and constitutional questions, which you all are presumably uh, concerned with and, and knowledgeable about. I mean, I do think when people step back from 1980, uh, 82, when the Federal Society was founded, all the way through 2004, it was a, a time of obviously conservative, generally conservative ascendancy uh, in the country. Um, a lot of things happened that people thought couldn't happen. It really is one forgets, and you know, historians now write the history of the Reagan years and take half of it for granted, or most of it for granted, but I was there a little bit in the academy in 1980 and then came to Washington in 85, uh, and they needn't have worked out as well as it did, at least in the short and medium term. And Reagan needn't have been a successful president. Uh, we needn't have won the Cold War without, uh, within a decade without uh, firing a shot. The economy didn't have to revive in the 80s. Um, and really, most strikingly almost, if you think of, if, if you put oneself back in 1980 and had been asked to predict what was the least likely thing that could happen, I would say it would be a revival of constitutionalism, if I can use that term broadly. Um, at the law schools, and even in the courts, and even in the body politic. I mean, that was really, I mean, winning the Cold War with a Reaganite strategy, that was something at least a few people had thought was doable and was a good idea. Uh, it was risky. We didn't know it was going to work. Uh, Supply-side economics and generally incentive-based and market-based economics uh, hadn't been, had been uh, losing uh, ground over the last, you know, what, 50 years or so. Uh, there was a reasonable intellectual argument that that would help. Uh, T cutting taxes, deregulation, et cetera, uh, letting markets work, uh, but uh, it wasn't clear it would work. One forgets after the fact sort of how much of a gamble, how much of an experiment the whole Reagan, uh, not just Reagan, but Reagan, Thatcher, et cetera, agenda was. Uh, this is even true, incidentally, of other parts of the agenda. Jim Wilson and others wrote intelligent articles about crime, but it wasn't clear that those policies would work when put into effect by Rudy Giuliani. Welfare reform wasn't clear that would work. One of the great things, and what I always said, over the last few years, when things look dark for conservatives, is one of the good things conservatives can fall back on is conservatives came to power. They had a lot of untested policy proposals. Uh, as I say, it was by no means universally agreed, even among conservatives, that these would work as well as they would work at all. Um, a lot of people were fatalistic, too late, impossible. Modernity has moved so far that you can never sort of, you know, undo the degree of control of the economy. Uh, we would become so uh, lax and uh, so beaten down by Vietnam that we could never actually roll back uh, the Soviet empire. Uh, the law schools were so utterly dominated by, you know, advocates of, at best, you know, moderately progressive advocates of the living constitution, and at worst, people way to the left of that, and the public had so lost touch with any kind of notion of constitutionalism that restoring that was just hopeless. I mean, one forgets how much that was the, the dominant thought, as I say, even among a lot of conservatives and libertarians and people who weren't happy with the way things were going in 1980. And as, as I've said over the last few years, even when conservative fortunes look dark, I mean, one of the things conservatives can take pride in is these policies did work, basically. Not every single one, and they weren't all implemented perfectly, and some were, uh, um, maybe some of them have to be rethought. But as a general matter, I think it's pretty rare in the history of modern politics, the history of democracies, for an intellectual movement to come to power, not full power, but fair amount of power over the years in 80 and then again in 94 um, and even in 2000, and put some of those policies, put some of those ideas more or less into effect and to see them work out as well or in some cases better uh, than expected and have an awful lot of people who weren't originally enamored of those policies say, you know what, that was probably the right thing to do and even have opponents of those policies not really try to repeal them. Is anyone really trying to go back to 1960s, 70s crime policies? Even a very liberal Democratic Congress isn't trying to repeal welfare reform, et cetera. I mean, you could really go, it's pretty striking how much that's the case. 
So the good news is the broader intellectual and political movement of which the Federalist Society uh, was an important part, is an important part, was an important part for those years. And I don't want to overstate the homogeneity of the movement or I don't want to make the Federalist Society just part of a political operation at all, but the broad movement of ideas um, was, I think, remarkably successful and that, from my point of view, is a good thing. Um, but it, it looked as if it might, um, and, and the only thing I would say is just the, the degree to which the f particular Federalist Society project seemed the least likely to succeed of all of these. Uh, it was really uh, striking at the time, and therefore the degree of success is particularly striking today. In any case, um, in 2000, uh, five, 2006, with the sort of collapse of the Bush administration and those very bad two years for, for Republicans and, and for conservatives. You can say they weren't conservative policies that, that were pursued, but nonetheless, the effect of it was a general uh, turn against conservatives, it seemed, electorally. Uh, with the elections of 2006 and 2008, um, it really was fair to ask the question, um, is that whole era over? You know, would people look back and say there was this interesting era from 80 to 2004 or so, and it was, you know, some interesting things happened, and historians will debate it, but that ended, and now we're in a new moment. Uh, I wasn't foolish to think that. 06 and 08 were big electoral moves, back-to-back um, to -back for one party to pick up more than 30 seats in the House, and um, together, what, to total in the two elections, what, 15 Senate seats, uh, win the presidency, first Democrat to win a, a majority since Carter, largest percentage of the popular vote since LBJ, um, a popular president getting winning the youth vote two to one. Yeah, by November 3rd, 2008, it really looked like uh, a new era had definitively begun. Um, and you know, an awful lot of people, like Larry Silverman at last year's conference, was pretty morose about the uh, prospects for the, for the future, for conservatism broadly, and libertarianism broadly, and constitutionalism broadly. Um, and I think the big story of the last year, and I really mean this not in a, a polemical or partisan way, and not in a triumphalist way, since I think it's wildly premature and foolish to be triumphalist, but just I do think analytically the big story of the last year is the pushback, to say the least, against uh, President Obama's project, uh, and really across the board, I would say, in, in economics, in terms of foreign policy, and big government, even on sort of constitutional issues, I'll come to that, um, and that at least we are back in a debate. We are back in a fluid situation. We are, in fact, not back in. We are now in a very fluid, indeterminate situation. It's not the 80s or the 90s. It'd be a big mistake to assume that one can just, you know, sort of go back to that in some mechanical way and assume the Cold War is still going or assume that Reagan's problems are the same as the economic, the economic problems Reagan confronted are the same as the economic problems we confronted. Big mistake not to think hard about the mistakes of Republicans in Congress and Republicans in the executive branch uh, and of conservative policies, of short-sightedness perhaps in certain conservative policies. I don't, it really shouldn't have become a sort of a Republican dogma to defend a housing bubble or to defend banks leveraging themselves 30 to 1, it doesn't seem to me. And that was, you know, people need to rethink that in terms of policy. But still, the big story, I think, is that the attempt, the moment that seemed as if it might be the beginning of a transformation of American politics in a fundamentally European social democratic direction in which what traditional American conservatism would almost be just written out, relegated to the ash heap of history, couldn't come back for 30 years, sort of a New Deal analogy. Um, that I think is not, that has not happened. That has not happened. Could still happen, I suppose. You know, as we've seen in the last year, politics can change dramatically in just a year, and people shouldn't, just by any means, as I say, be overconfident. But I think the we have sort of dodged the bullet. Churchill said, I, I say this in the editorial on the New Weekly Standard. Churchill once said that there's nothing more exhilarating than. Um, you know, the feeling of, of having been shot at and and and, and missed, you know. Uh, and he said this from when he was a young soldier. Um, and I do think there's a lot of exhilaration uh, among conservatives now in the sense that uh, we were being shot at and the whole future of conservatism was being shot at. And I do think the bullet missed, and I don't think it's going to be revived in the next few months despite uh, Speaker Pelosi's claims that health care is alive and I, even even if they could jam it through, um, it would be such a, a suicidal mission, I think, for them politically that I, I don't, either it won't happen or if it does happen, I don't think it will help the fortunes of Obama's version of liberalism much.